Hey guys, Sean here at the Gardner Center. So here we are at the very end of April. May is just around the corner, which means the official start of our outdoor growing season is just around the corner. And whether or not the weather is cooperating, and by the way, it really hasn't been this year, plants are rolling in here to our nursery every single day at this point. I wanted to spend some time this week talking about a noteworthy item that showed up during this past week, which is our roses. Um, people call all the time and ask, are your roses in yet? When are your roses coming? So I was like, you know what? This might be a perfect opportunity to get the word out that our roses are here. So I was gonna talk a little bit about what roses we do have and kind of more specifically why we have the roses that we do have, because there's kind of a, there's a, thought process that goes behind my decision making with the roses. So I'm gonna spend a little time talking about that. So my very first job I ever had in horticulture, my first legitimate job in horticulture where I was getting paid and working full time was actually tending to a formal rose garden. And this was an old school formal, formal rose garden full of hybrid tea roses and grandiflora roses and floribundas and little miniatures, all the old school roses. And my full-time job, nine to five, Monday to, through Friday, was to look after these roses. And the reason they needed a full-time person to look after these roses was because the roses I just named, the hybrid teas, grandifloras, et cetera, are what I would consider very high maintenance plants when we're talking about plants and gardening. Um, I was there five days a week because these roses needed to be sprayed once a week they needed to be deadheaded once a week. They needed to be irrigated three times a week. They needed to be fertilized once a month. They needed to be coned and mulched and protected over the winter time. Lots of maintenance involved with the hybrid tea roses, Grand Flores, Floribundus. About 15 or 20 years ago, as people's lifestyles changed and people's tastes changed, those types of roses kind of fell out of favor with the general gardening public um, because they were high maintenance, they were a lot of work. And I know there's a bunch of you out there who still love and grow and adore your hybrid tea roses, but mainstream gardeners today, um, they really don't want all the work involved with, with uh, keeping roses in the, in the yard. And so much work has been done with them over the years that, um, there's just so many good ones now that don't need, I don't wanna say any maintenance, but the maintenance is so much less. So <clears throat> I'm gonna talk about some of the roses that I bring in, because they're really good ones. Remember, I, my first job was looking after a thousand rose bushes five days a week. So it was my, fir my first professional jaunt in horticulture. Um, so a couple of popular ones we have here, um, and I learned about these David Austin roses when I was working at the Rose Garden. Um, David Austin roses, also known as English roses. I've heard people call them cabbage roses before because of the shape of their flowers. Um, these guys were all developed by um, David Austin in England. He started um, developing these back in the 60s and he worked on them right until uh, 2018 when he, when he passed away. And these are commonly known as English shrub roses. And some of their notable characteristics and some of the things that he kind of worked on with them was for them to um, repeat bloom throughout the summer as opposed to just blooming once in June like a lot of your old roses did. So David Austin roses are repeat bloomers, wide range of colors from whites to pinks to reds to yellows, apricot, peach, all those colors in there. And they all have strong but different fragrances. So they're really known for their, for their fragrances and they're also very disease resistant. So that weekly spraying of fungicide that I was doing at my rose job, these guys do not need to be sprayed once a week. Um, you may still run into problems with them that needs a spray here and there, because that's gonna be true of all roses, but they don't need to be preventatively sprayed on a weekly basis. So the David Austin roses English shrub roses, absolutely gorgeous. So we wanna check those out, they just arrived. Couple other guys over here. So this is a shrub rose, one of my favorite shrub roses of all time. This one's called Iceberg. And this one has pure white flowers. 
Um, when you think of a shrub rose, you're gonna think of things like the knockout roses. We stopped carrying knockout roses here years ago. Um, knockout roses came out about 20, 25 years ago. And they're so overplanted at this point. There's just, there's better choices out there. I think they've been overdone. So this is a nice shrub rose called Iceberg. Again, gonna flower all summer. Um, not gonna need the weekly fungicide applications. And it's a nice compact one too. Two to three feet tall, three to four feet wide sort of thing. So that's Iceberg. Over here in the front, a lot of people think this is a miniature rose, but it's not. This is um, a drift rose, the type of ground cover rose. So the nice thing about these is they don't get very tall. They're only gonna grow about a foot or a foot and a half tall, but they'll spread three or four feet wide. So these are nice to use like on embankments or a hillside, somewhere where you want maybe a taller ground cover with color. Same thing, gonna flower all summer does not require the weekly um the weekly spraying of fungicides and insecticides like the like your old school roses and then over here let me pull this one around we've got a lot to talk about on this one so this is a climbing rose um something very important to keep in mind when you talk about climbing roses is despite what their name implies climbing roses don't climb like not even a little bit they're, they have no inclination to climb. A climbing rose is nothing more than a rose that gets tall or long stems. It does not climb in the traditional sense where you might think of like a honeysuckle or a mandevilla or peas or clematis that are gonna twine around a fence or a trellis. These guys are just really tall growing roses. The problem is they're really tall growing roses but their stems are really weak. So the tall stems just kind of flop. Um, so if you've ever heard the term rambling rose or rambler when we're talking about a rose, that's a better description of a climbing rose because if you want your climbing rose to climb, that's all on you. That's, um, that's, on, that's on training and on staking and tying. So if you've ever grown tomatoes, if you grow really tall dahlias, things that you have to put stakes in and then kind of tie them up as they grow. Same thing is happening with the climbing roses. Um, if you plant this next to a trellis and don't touch it, it's just gonna flop all over the ground and make a mess. Um, so as a climbing rose grows, you attach its stems to your trellis. And after a couple of years and you establish a frame, framework on a trellis or an arbor, you're gonna be good to go because then its framework is gonna be there. It's gonna be where you want it to be and it's just gonna grow in subsequent years and add to where you want it to be. But in the very beginning, the first few years, you have to put it where it, where you want it to be. It won't just climb, it, climb its way up there. It's gonna ramble and it's gonna flop around. So the climbing roses are absolutely gorgeous. Don't have a lot of them. I only have a few uh, different varieties that I really like a lot. This one is called Zephyrine Johan. This is a very old French climbing rose. Kind of a couple of cool things about this one. Number one, it doesn't have any thorns, which is really nice in a rose. And number two, because of this particular rose's parentage, this rose, unlike most other roses, will tolerate quite a bit of shade. So if you've ever wanted to have a rose, a, a rose or a climbing rose in a shadier spot, most roses want eight hours of sun. This guy would be fine if it got filtered sun throughout the day or even only a couple hours of direct sun in the morning or that sort of thing. So Zephyrine Johan Climbing Rose, great one for a shady spot. On the more broader subject of roses, if you already have roses, um, you should be hitting them now with some fertilizer. Roses are very heavy feeders. Um, if you're not using rose tone on your roses, you should be. Um, that's really the best thing out there for them. And do this once a week, or I'm sorry, once a month. This can be uh, every, every month from March right through the end of August. You don't wanna feed into the fall because that encourages growth late in the season. So once a month with the, um, with the rose tone. And if you've ever heard me talk about lawns, you've heard me talk about lime before. Um, lime is something that people often ignore and neglect to do with their lawns but it's also something that people f overlook with the ornamental plants. And roses are one of those plants that doesn't like a super acidic soil like we have here in Connecticut. 
So roses benefit from regular applications of lime. They like a more neutral to alkaline soil. So if you have not been liming your roses and your ro you take really good care of your roses, but they're not doing as well as you think they should be or you'd like them to be, try giving them a couple of applications of lime during the growing season, because that's gonna make a big difference, especially if they're not growing as nicely as you think they should be. So all these roses are here now. We got Mom's Day right around the corner, I think next week. I think it's next weekend. Um, so you can go to gardenercenter.com and check out our entire selection of roses that are, have arrived. You can see them there on our rose collection on the gardenercenter.com. You can also go to our floral collection on gardenercenter.com and check out Jamie's beautiful offerings for um, arrangements for Mother's Day. And either the arrangements or the living rose bushes can be ordered online for delivery or pick up here in the store. Um, Mother's Day is next week, next week, guys, so don't forget, and I'll see you next time.